The Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy chapter 4. The Bible... Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. So the Bible also says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 that we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important to know that in these last days we are to be aware of what Satan's doing in our world and we are not to fall easily prey into the devil's system. So th one of the things that Satan is doing in our world is that he is trying to eliminate truth and he is trying to give false evidence. So today's teaching is going to be covering a lot of that incident. So some of you have heard about Jim Acosta, what he did. And at the White House, you know, he acted like some little girl or something. This is not to say that, this is not to say that Trump is flawless. He has his problems too, but he had the floor. And once, he, he, once the president says, you're done, you're done. But then, no, you know, he got all emotional. So he wanted to say a thing or two. And then what happened was, is that when he, when the video caught him on his, uh, you know, how upset he was, and then he gave this like quick violent hand motion to push away one of the people. And then when they caught that on video, the liberals, they all just uh, went berserk mode and they wanted to defend the liberal news media and Jim Acosta. So then what they said was, is that it was docked. So you probably heard that already. So what's going on in the news media is that they're trying to claim that uh, this video clip that caught Acosta, his violent hand motion, that it was all docked. But here's the problem, is that that original source of the video came from this guy who was exposing uh, a lot of the things that are going with the liberal things, and he was covering end time events as well. And that guy, he defended himself on that video. He said that all he did was zoom in. So because he was zooming in, that's all he did. He didn't dock it, it was called zooming in. So then, I didn't hear an argument against that. You know, it could be docked for all I know, but I also wouldn't be surprised that the liberal news media, they just want to find something to defend their own groupies, because that's what they've always done. So if it turned out that the liberal news media are lying about uh, the evidence where they said that it was docked when it isn't, because what's really interesting is that one of these reporters talked to Trump and it looked like Trump was like surprised about that, that he didn't expect that. And he was upset. He's like, it was not docked. They, it's called zooming in. That's what he said. But see, these talk show hosts and these liberal news media hosts, what they want to do is that they want to invalidate the evidences that might, uh, that might criticize their belief, that will oppose them, that will make them look bad. That's what they will always do against you. That's the reason why a lot of people the only way they can popularize what they record is through social networks. That's the only way. Now that's why they want to put limitations on social networks. That way people don't see the truth for themselves and judge for themselves. Now I'm not saying that uh, the video was actually zoomed in or that it was docked, but I'm saying this. What I'm saying is that this is the typical reaction of left wing of people who are involved ab about anything that would oppose their beliefs. They're gonna hunt you down and they'll say anything to try to crucify you. And then this argument about zooming in, they didn't address that. Now, I would like to hear what they say. Maybe eventually they'll say something. But that's what the liberal news media does. So I want you to understand this too, is that look at Daniel chapter eight and verse 11. This is prophesied in the Bible what the world would do. You know what the world's going to do? What they want to do is that they want to invalidate truth. They want to destroy truth. So when you bring up evidences, right, then they're going to try to dismiss that as, well, you know, was the guy credible who did the evidence? What, did he graduate from a prestigious university? Oh, you got that just from YouTube or Facebook. That's what they're going to do. Because what they refuse to do is that rather than addressing what was recorded and what was audio recorded, instead they'll just question the guy's authenticity and his background and you know what school they graduated from. That's not how you find truth. That is a supporting part for truth, credential and authority, but that doesn't mean it proves to be true. You have to deal with the source itself. And the source itself, that's how you find out if it's wrong or if it's right. That's what you've got to do. What they want to do is that they want to destroy evidence of truth 
and falsify. You know what their job is? It's to give you false information. It's to give you false evidence. That is what this wicked world is guilty of. And this includes even conservative right-wing people, too. I'm going to mention them, too. And this even includes people who are trying to expose the conspiracies, too. I'm exposing everybody right here. That includes you, too, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Please do, OK? I don't want you to just follow me, OK? Please do, OK? So the point is right here is that Daniel chapter 8, this was prophesied at verse 11. Yea, he magnify himself even to the prince of the host. And by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. So notice this is referring to the Antichrist, right? So the Antichrist, his job is to take over the temple at Jerusalem, persecute the Israelites over there, and then take away the sacrifices. But this is very interesting how your King James Bible words it at verse 12. And an host was given him. So this particular host was given to the Antichrist against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. So it's their job to attack Israel. Hmm. And it cast down the what? Truth to the ground. And it what? Practiced and prospered. So this it, it can refer to two people. It can refer to one, the Antichrist, or it can refer to this host that the Antichrist has. But you'll notice right here, their job is to falsify evidence and then their job is to also criticize God's people, God's nation, the Israel. Now, isn't it interesting how your King James Bible words it? It calls it host, huh? kind of like CNN host, talk show host, Stephen Colbert, talk show host, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon. Mm, interesting, isn't it? Uh, it kind of matches with other TV hosts who always lie through their teeth and falsify evidence. They are aiming especially for the younger generation because they know by showing all this stuff and they'll do it through light entertainment and you know false scholastic appearances, false cloak of professionalism, and then they fool the younger generation. Yeah. See, media is so biased and messed up. And this doesn't matter. This can even include Fox News and conservative talk show hosts too. You understand that. So this is the job of Satan's host, you understand. It's very interesting host. And how many of them always uh, try to criticize the nation of Israel, what it's doing? Does that mean I'm justifying Israel? No, Israel has its problem. God definitely took care of them for the past 2,000 years. You know how he took care of them, okay? So God's not joking around when he chastises and punishes his own children. Amen. And you know that more than I do. How that has God been dealing with your life, all right? Anyway, the point is this, though. The point is, is that Satan's job, though, is to attack God's people, is it not? So he will attack God's physical nation, Israel. He will also attack God's spiritual nation, the Christian church. Does this mean churches are flawless? Does this mean that Israel is flawless? No, we all got problems. But it is very troubling how they would like to focus on those groups, when there are plenty of terrorist Muslim actions, plenty of messed up homosexual activity, and liberals who just don't have common sense. Here's a funny thing. They don't show you this. But uh, this, uh, when I attended the University of California, Berkeley, there's this building right there called the Martin Luther King Jr. Building. And they all want to retain their architects, OK? Next time I visited that place, it was gone. They were like remodeling. And I was like, that's not Berkeley. They wouldn't do that. They wouldn't like remodel the whole thing. You know, because they want to retain their historical architectures, especially if it relates to Mar Martin Luther King Jr., right? They wouldn't do that. Then I found out why. Because when Trump became president, all these guys went psycho that they were actually burning down stuff. And they burnt down the building. That building was on fire. Yep. I was shocked. But you don't see that on the news. It, it actually, now this clip is from a mainstream news. This is not YouTube. This is mainstream news. BBC. <laughs> BBC showed it, but it was just a small clip, and it didn't get a lot of t attention. But if it was Christians doing that, yeah. oh, and then radical uh, nation of Israel doing bombings, then this would be something that they would like to harp on. But no, if it's like a couple you know, terrorist Muslims that blow themselves up, or homosexuals that would burn down and crash windows and buildings, which I see at Berkeley campus, and I was all, 
And I've seen it within one and a half year only I saw already stuff going on. Why don't they show that? See, this is Satan's job, is to criticize this and to falsify evidence. That's his job. That is predicted in the last days. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, please. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Not only that, science also falsified things. Amen? Amen. Yeah, science. Now, I'm not... I, uh, science is true, all right? Science does not go against the Word of God. But it is science that is falsified yeah. by man. Uh -huh. Scientific evidence, when you study scientific evidences, it demands intelligent design. It demands evolution to be a fairy tale. It demands that book to be true Amen. and something really incredible. But, you know, they like to falsify scientific evidences. That's why, isn't it interesting, your Bible says in verse 20, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, or of science what? Falsely so-called, see? So you know what the world will do as well? They're going to falsify science as well. That's the world's job, folks, is to falsify science. You might say, no, they do it through scientific experiment and research. You want me to shock you with something right here? I took a research methods class, and they're teaching you actually how to do research yourself. So knowing all those little equa equations and stuff like that. So I had to study all those things. They taught you how to critique research and how to validate your own research too. But this was very surprising to me. Now, I already knew this, and you people already knew this. They, they falsify scientific evidence. We already know that. That's a no-brainer. But it's incredible that a liberal university, that this professor would actually say when talking about scientific evidences, research methods, majority of scientists, when they are faced with the research, majority throw it out and do it all over again. You know why? Because it conflicts their theory. Mm -hmm. yeah. He says that once they research something, they see it right in front of their face. It's real. They experimented with it. But then because it contradicts their own preconceived belief, what they learned at school, yeah. they would like to call it science theory. See, Because it conflicts with that, they must be wrong about what they actually experimented and researched. So see, they prioritize their belief, their bias, more than what they actually experimented. I thought that's what scientists, science is, right? You're actually experimenting things. So he actually said that majority of them are biased. I was very shocked. I never thought I'd hear a professor saying that at a liberal university. I was actually shocked. I was like, wow, I got to remember and write all this down. <laughs> I'll never forget that. But he said majority of scientists are biased. And then he asked, actually, he did an intelligent discussion, too. He actually did group activities why the students would think so. And then all the students gave their own opinion why scientists would do that. And, they, and then the professor also taught that all of us deep down inside, we do have a bias on something. And that was very eye-opening to the people. They're like, wow, I never thought of it that way before. But you see, the Christians, they already have the advantage, or I hope you do. That's why it's very important that your heart is soft to whatever the Bible says is true, yeah. to whatever is true. Because Christians, we don't care if it contradicts, conflicts our beliefs. Mm -hmm. If we want the truth, and Jesus says, I am the truth, yeah. Jesus said, thy word is truth, we don't care if we would change our teaching and belief. But how many Christian preachers, especially proud ones on the internet, don't want to take back what they said? Ah, ah, see that? So that's this is preaching right here. Okay. But anyway, you see right here that science is falsified as well. You can see that. That's the world's job. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 2. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 2. You do not live, folks, in a fair world. You've got to understand that. You do not live in a world where they're fair on all sides. That is totally not true. It's so hilarious that they would accuse us of conspiracy theories concerning Obama, but then they would try to come up with conspiracy theories themselves about Trump. Yeah. It's really funny. Now, am I denying some of them? No. Trump, he's just a sinner like everybody. And I wouldn't doubt that he's being controlled by some means as well. I wouldn't doubt that. 
But the point is this, it's exposing the hypocrisy of this liberal world, how they want everything to join on their side, their side. It's a biased world we live in. OK, it's hypocrisy. You know why it's hypocrisy? They'll accuse you of not having validated truth. And you have to explain it every argument through the video you post, actual video and recordings you post. And not only that, you have to explain to them clearly and persuasively from the Bible, one verse at a time, because they're such baby Christians. You have to think of all the philosophical arguments, historical arguments, mathematical arguments. And did you notice how atheists and evolutionists and liberals, they'll be very nitpicky on the evidence. They'll always question your evidence. What if we started to do that with them? How would they feel? That's hypocrisy. Look at 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Then when? In the latter times, in the end times. It's going to happen. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to dis seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. See, they're going to fall for seducing spirits at the end times. Why? What's going to happen in these end times? Verse 2, speaking what? Lies. In what? Hypocrisy. They're going to be hypocritical about it. So when we would point out saying, questioning their, authentic, their sources, their credentials, and their work, you know what they do? They get all emotional. And they get all emotional and they'll say, well, that's majority of scientists won't think that way. Majority of people at the government don't think that way. Majority of people, you know why they always want to resort to majority? Because that's the only argument they got. If you're in communist uh, uh, North Korea and Nazi Germany, you think that will work? Well, the majority of our scientists said that. Well, the majority of our government leaders say that. You think that's going to stick out, man? No, that's a poor argument. You have to take the source itself, the evidence itself, and critique it or, authent or authenticate it. It's so amazing, we have to always pull out evidences and always defend it, whereas these people, you don't dare to question their evidences. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Funny, man. They call our scientific evidences of creationism as preconceived bias. They accuse the reports that we expose as fake news. It's funny. They themselves are false science. They themselves are fake news. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the when... Last days, perilous times shall come. So this is happening. But look at uh, verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. We're all going to suffer persecution. Why? Verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax. How great? Worse and worse. Not good. Worse and worse. What? Deceiving and being deceived. You think this, is a, you think this was it? This is just the beginning, folks. It's going to get worse. It's going to get so much worse where they're going to try to dock videos, falsify evidences to criticize and degrade Christianity as a whole. The lying will become worse. Why? What's the goal? What's the end goal? They, they don't admit it now, but the end goal, you, look at verse 12. That's the end goal. Persecution. See that? That's why they have to lie. Oh, no, you're saying that we're going to kill Christians. We're going to persecute Christians. We never said that. You're lying. You're lying. Didn't the Pharisees say that to Jesus? Jesus said, you came out to kill me. And the Pharisees like, no, you, you, we never said that. We're going to kill you. What happened? They crucified Jesus. These lying, serpent-tongued, wicked, rotten talk show hosts, media hosts, scientists, etc., all these rotten so-and-sos, they're, they're just lying through their teeth when they say, you know, oh, we're giving evidence. And when you question them and you provide evidence, then they critique you. And the reason why they're all doing this is to attempt persecution against Christianity at the end. That's their end goal. And all these people will say, no, we never said that. Why are you accusing us for something? Watch. They're going to cry out, crucify you. Yep. They're going to say crucify eventually, just like those Pharisees. That's the end goal of Satan. The end goal of Satan is to persecute Christians. That's the reason why he has to raise up worse and worse fake evidences, deception, and lies. That's the goal. It's to accomplish persecution against Christians. And then when Christ after Christians get raptured, 
then he's going to attack the nation of Israel as well as the Gentile tribulation saints. Okay, look at Romans chapter 1. Let's close it right here. Hmm? Romans chapter 1. Here's a good one. Now, this one's going to be extremely controversial, but I believe it's true. I believe it's true. God's going to give you a reprobate mind if you're not careful. And when he gives you a reprobate mind, you don't want that. Look at Romans chapter 1, and then we're going to read verse 20 through 23, and then 25, and then 27. You know what's going to happen to you if you act like this? You're going to become a homosexual. Yeah, that's controversial, right? Well, give me the scientific evidences. What's your logic? What's your reason? Blah, 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 blah. My evidence is the word of God. But not only that, my evidence is history. Look back. Haven't, what happened as soon as we started falsifying more and more evidences, giving false science with evolution, fake evidences to support liberalism, this mindset of persecuting Christians, what happened after that? Didn't the homosexuality increase? That is current event, right in slap in your face evidence. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. And then we'll read verse 20. Romans chapter 1. We'll read verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as he eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So God made it very clear, my creation, if you study science, the physical experiment with the physical workings of the universe, it should prove there is a God. But you know what happened? Look at verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. They didn't want that. So as a result, verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they what? They became fools. Didn't they act like a bunch of fools burning down the building at Berkeley? They acted like a bunch of fools. Didn't they act like a bunch of fools with science evidence right in front of their face, but then uh, they ignored it? Didn't they act like a bunch of fools wearing uh, women's sex organs as their costume, as a retaliation against Trump, anti-feminism, blah, blah, blah? See, they, they profess themselves to be wise. Remember that. They're wise people. Majority of scholars, credible, graduated from universities, so and so on. They became fools. Amen. If you won't say amen, I'll say amen to that one. Wicked, wicked, godless, forsaken world, man. Don't say that I don't know what I'm talking about. I attended school at Berkeley. I know exactly what I'm talking about. Now let's keep reading right here. Verse 25. Verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a what? That's their job. See that? It is to falsify evidences. It's to provide a lie to deceive you. And when you do that, you better watch out because, look at verse 27, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. Isn't that what happened? Yep. Homosexuality, isn't it interesting, immediately followed the coattails of changing the truth of God into a lie. Isn't that interesting? That's your fruit. That's your fruit. That's why, because they created lies to destroy truth, we got scientists and TV hosts who became homosexuals. Science defended homosexuals for being born this way. There are actually groups, scientific groups, that pressured universities. So some universities are forced to open up programs that are concentrated for the homosexual community, giving them more of an opportunity compared to others in the science field. Mm-hmm. That's why you got Anderson Cooper. That's why you got Don Lemon, Ellen DeGeneres, excuse me, Ellen DeGeneres, and Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell. See? All right, so what am I trying to, am I trying to be mean and stuff like that? Well, the thing is this. They always, they always, Christian. these talk show hosts always make fun of Christians, right? That's right. They make their audience laugh so many times, right? right? Don't, am I not being mild with this just one little video clip. What does this one little video clip do when those guys talk hours and hours right, of garbage? That's right, that's right. It's a wicked world we live in, folks. It's a wicked world we live in. So because of that, the, te the tendency is supporting homosexuality. And you don't have to believe with what I'm saying. That's fine. You don't have to believe that. 
You don't have to believe this part. That's why I marked it in red, OK? So you don't have to look at that, OK? But I'll tell you one thing right here. There is no doubt when I'm giving you actual cases right here, that's troubling. And you should search yourself, because I can't convince you with what I'm teaching. You have to search yourself. But you're too busy with so much stuff at school, that's why you don't have time to research yourself, right? That's the tactic of school brainwashing. Get you so busy with their own evidences they provided for you. When their evidence is already questionable, so you don't have time to self-reflect and critique it. OK, but anyway, 2 Thessalonians 2, we're not, uh, I spend so much time on this. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8, 10 and through 12, God said this, the reason why these people are deceived into a lie is because God made it that way. You might say, why did God make it that way? Because they chose, they hated the truth, and they loved a lie that fitted their own preconceived bias. So because of that, God said he deliberately deceived them. So you better watch that heart of yours, because if you want to believe in what you want to believe in, here's a matter of fact. God will give you what you want to believe. That's a matter of fact. God will give you what you want to believe, and he will deceive you. That's very troubling, folks. You don't want that in your life. Uh, Jesus Christ opened up his arms and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He offers that freely to you. Why would you reject such an offer?